from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, October 10th. Okay, so we have the moon in Capricorn energy here all day, which of course anchors us, grounds us more into the present moment, makes us more aware of our physical bodies, of our physical circumstances, and really illuminates to us what needs to be done on our to-do list to kind of clean up the remnants of the past, to clear the way for us to actually move on and move forward. Although we want to keep ourselves very busy with the mundane tasks and chores in order to avoid some of the emotions, some of the thoughts that do have the potential to totally take us over if we're not careful, we are definitely going to have some aspects that do trigger this emotional and mental realization, regardless of how much energy we put into trying to ignore it, trying to avoid it. Reason being, we have the first quarter moon popping off here in this Capricorn energy. The first quarter moon is always a point of realizing where there's an urgency, an impulse, a need, if you will, to take action, to make a decision so that we can essentially pivot away from what needs to end, what needs to die and pivot towards what we need to do, what we need to pursue. This Capricorn energy, of course, being a cardinal earth energy does have the power to initiate a brand new path, a brand new quest, a brand new adventure, especially to build the foundation and structure that will be strong enough to house our new goals, new visions, new dreams. But today we are being sandwiched between two very major events. Of course, here yesterday on the 9th, we had Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings go retrograde in Gemini energy. Again, there's an astral forecast for this particular event. And again, download your October energy guide for your zodiac sign to understand where this is impacting your life the most. The other side of the sandwich is taking place here tomorrow on the 11th, and that includes Pluto, the great transformer, going direct at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. It is a perfection degree, a karmic degree, a mastery degree. It is definitely going to change our mood, change our attitude, and we are going to be empowered to take control over our lives and actually make the major changes that we know that we need to make. Again, there's an astral forecast for that particular event and download your energy guide for October specifically for your zodiac sign. So today's the last day that Pluto is going to be retrograde and over the last five months, Pluto's retrograde should have been illuminating to us where it is that there's still power struggles, still blockages, still restrictions, still limitations in our physical realm due to the old version of self, what that version of self had built and created and where this new version of self is no longer in alignment, no longer resonating with certain circumstances, topics, themes, foundations, relationship dynamics, and structures that again, we have to collapse from now until November. So there's definitely a lot going on here today. And again, we are gifted with a little bit of an opportunity to be grounded because of this Capricorn energy. But again, we're being sandwiched in between one planet going one way, the other planet going the other. This is a very illuminary time where new realizations are coming online. Again, the further we get away from this eclipse that we just had, the more information and details, the bigger, broader perspective will be revealed. So there are 11 different aspects popping off here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. Side note, we actually have a pretty interesting dynamic popping off here today as well. It's called the Yod. And the Yod is a very mystical configuration between three different planets. And this one involves Venus, who is in Scorpio energy, again, doing a deep dive in the shadow work in order to pivot, have a major change in transformation of heart, of worth, of values, of passions, of desires. We're also involving Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessing, blessings, just fresh retrograde in this Gemini energy. And of course, Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. Jupiter is again taking us inward to kind of give us a pause to see whether we're not 
still in alignment with some of the goals, some of the vision, some of the dreams that we kind of percolated and initiated back in May. We're definitely going to have a time to kind of pluck out the silver linings and really challenge our thoughts, our ideas, our opinions, our perspectives. This is an inner realm growth, an inner realm expansion of the information and knowledge that we currently have. Chiron, on the other hand, being in a retrograde is giving us the opportunity to have a little bit of a clear sight, if you will, on the issues that are still alive and well within us, the pain, the trauma wounds that are still kind of dictating our choices, our actions, and we're able to kind of nip it in the bud, deal with it head on and actually do something about it. So when we get to that particular aspect here today, we will talk about it in a little bit more further detail, but just know that this particular energy is going to illuminate new perspectives. It is going to put us in a situation where we kind of feel pulled between, you know, two different situations and circumstances. We're at a dilemma point or a crossroads point or a choice point that at this particular juncture isn't as clear as we need it to be. And so where the topics and themes are concerned, because Venus is here, we're definitely focused on love, on pleasure, happiness, on joy, if you will, and how some of those realizations are very much conflicting with our belief system, with our futuristic visions. We are, again, being triggered from our personal pain and trauma wounds from Chiron. It's opening us up to be real and raw and vulnerable. And sometimes the insecurities can definitely creep up on us. So there's going to be a back and forth. Again, we're still in Libra season. The scales have not reached a very comfortable calmness. We did have a brief pause here the other day when we reached that 15th degree, but now we are in flux again. And we are going to continue to spend the duration of Libra season trying to bring these scales back into balance, especially between our heart and our head. So we kick the day off with the moon in this Capricorn energy, making a very awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. And of course, this is going to illuminate for us some confusion, some not so nice topics and themes where we're really struggling to see the positives. Again, Uranus, the great awakener has a major effect on our central nervous system. Him being retrograde in this Taurus energy is supposed to be illuminating to us where it is that we're holding on to the old for dear life, where it is that we're resisting, making some of the changes that we know that we need to make. And so emotionally speaking, again, in Capricorn energy, we can take on a little bit of a negative Nancy mood and attitude and perspective and find ourselves looking through a pessimistic lens. This is going to be uh, one of those interactions that don't bring us any clarity. Instead, kind of emphasizes the amount of confusion that we're currently sitting in. The moon in Capricorn energy, then going to sextile, which is a beautiful interaction with Saturn, its ruler. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He is retrograde in this Pisces energy, trying to close out a 30-year cycle, especially where our old belief system is concerned, what we believe we deserve, what we believe we are worthy of, what we believe we can actually achieve. This is a good vibe, though, a good energy, which means that we are thinking a lot more realistically. We are taking a more sensible, logical, practical approach to what needs to end, what we have to kind of deconstruct, what is no longer working for us, where routines, relationships, money matters are concerned, and where it is that we're trying to conjure up a new goal, new vision, new dream for our future selves. The moon then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy, again, in his rulership. I actually like this interaction because Neptune, of course, is our higher self, our spirituality, our intuition, our dreams, our creativity. 
And we at this particular juncture are kind of giving ourselves a little bit of permission to move into La La Land, to kind of see where it is that we're being pulled into a new path, into a new direction, where we're starting to define the details of this new goal, vision, and dream. And of course, whatever it is that we can kind of visualize, whatever it is that we get excited about in our inner realm, we're able to actually manifest it, bring it to life, give it form through the moon and Capricorn. Again, applying logic, planning, strategizing on how it is that we can bring some of these new goals and visions and dreams to life. So 1144 AM Eastern Standard Time, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, making a very harsh interaction with Jupiter. This is the Yod formation that I kind of briefly already talked about. Now, this takes place at 1144, 1256 PM, Venus is going to make the harsh interaction with Chiron. So these are the three players in which I already kind of previously discussed. And let me just say, Venus's interaction, first and foremost, with Jupiter is magnifying our insecurities, magnifying our fears, magnifying where it is that we're having a hard time even realizing how we're going to bring some of the closures to some of the chapters that again, in our heart space, we've already kind of decided we need to put behind us how we're even going to do that. Again, Jupiter is now retrograde. So there's a lot of reflection there's a lot of looking back. It is in Gemini energy. So we are using our intellect and Venus, of course, she's using her intuition in that Scorpio energy. She's using her emotions and her intuition to kind of guide her on where new passions, new desires are being realized. And in turn, realizing what we have to let go of, what we have to close the door on in order to pursue this new path. So normally when Jupiter's involved, he brings a certain level of optimism, of confidence, of hope, of faith, not in this particular interaction. If anything else, the volume gets turned all the way up on where it is that we're really holding a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities, not only for the future, but how we're going to put some of the past aspects and elements behind us as well. Now, Venus interacting in this harsh way with Chiron, again, really ripping the scabs off of some of the wounds that we thought we were doing a good job in healing. Again, with Venus and Scorpio energy, we're doing the shadow work. We're understanding the major pivot place taking place in our heart space. We're looking at our physical realms. We want more happiness, more passion, more desire, more safety, more security, more stability. And we're realizing who and what is not helping that particular cause, who and what is not helping us to feel all of those lovely things that we 100% want to feel. This is definitely going to highlight our restlessness, our indecision, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities of putting ourselves out in the world in ways that we've been hesitant in doing and realizing where it is that we have such a strong passion, strong desire to live a happy, simple life. But again, realizing the blockages, the challenges, the limitations that are preventing us from doing just that. Because Venus rules over this Libra season and we're not coming to any kind of decisions, any kind of choice points under this particular influence, we're definitely going to have a super hard challenge in finding the peace, the harmony, the balance, the compromise between what we want to do and what we think we should do. Insecurities are at an all time high. We have the moon getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with the sun at 2.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which gives us our first quarter moon. Again, Capricorn energy and Libra energy are the furthest elements away from each other. The sun shining very bright in the Libra energy is trying to show us where it is that we have to bring a certain part of our lives back into balance, back into peace, back into harmony. And the moon in Capricorn, emotionally speaking, is taking a good look at what we actually have power and control over here in the physical realm. So anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment, an emotional awareness of what it is that we have to do, what we have to pursue, where it is that, again, we do have to address some particular areas of chaos, of concern, in order for us to realize what we have to put behind us and what we actually want to choose for ourselves in moving on and moving forward. This first quarter moon lunar phase is always a crisis point of consciousness, a realization on who and what needs to stay, needs to go again to bring peace, harmony, balance back into our lives. 
Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's going to be making an awkward interaction with that North Node in Aries energy. We want to think about the future, but what is required of us to kind of create the realm and reality that we have manifested, that we're dreaming and visualizing in our inner realm scares the absolute shit out of us. Again, Venus being in the Scorpio energy, just as we identify what it is that we actually want, we equally identify what we have to do to actually get it. That usually brings up a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities, puts us in a situation to really figure out if we have what it takes to do what needs to be done in order to close the door on particular aspects of the past in order for us to clear the space, clean the slate for us to pursue something new. At this particular juncture, we're not really open to thinking that far into the future because the weight of the world essentially is very much in our heart space at this time, a lot of heart activations. If you're having a lot of ascension symptoms here this week, which we knew we would, I am going to recommend that you go ahead, you re-listen the ascension forecast episode for this week. The moon is then going to oppose, sit across from Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, because Cancer energy that Mars is in and Capricorn energy that the moon is in, they sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. Of course, Mars doesn't enjoy being in cancer energy. He is in preservation mode. He is willing to fight, defend, protect what it is that he's already built, already created. Emotionally speaking, this Capricorn energy is kind of at odds with Mars. We have a lot of restlessness. We have a lot of ants in our pants. We have a lot of frustrations coming up within our awareness on where it is that, again, we're too attached, too connected to the past, and where it is that we're resisting making the changes that we know that we need to make to free ourselves up, to pursue a new path, pursue something new. The moon in Capricorn then going to make a very harsh interaction with Jupiter, that planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings who just went retrograde in this Gemini energy. So this is definitely going to take us down. I'm going to call it the negative memory lane where we're focused on all the things that went wrong instead of all the things that went right. We are emotionally seeing where it is that we've been challenged, where it is that we've been blocked, held back, restricted in a lot of ways. And instead of kind of rising to the challenge, to overcome some of those circumstances, we're going to set up camp in the negative Nancy end of town. And we're actually going to wah, wah, cry about it, feel a little bit whiny and actually lose ourselves to a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of negative ideas. We're challenging ourselves to again, grow and expand our mental plane with this Gemini energy. But at this particular juncture, we are definitely feeling very bad for ourselves for the karmic hand in which we've been dealt. To further those particular wounds, we have the moon in Capricorn getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Chiron, that wounded healer. And so again, even though we are setting up camp in the poor old me situation and circumstance of town, we are definitely picking the scabs off of the wounds in which we have been healing. This is going to bring up our fears, our doubts, our insecurities, especially where this new version of self has been kind of trying to anchor in, take control, take power back. We are going to lose ourselves to the old version of selves narrative for just a minute. There is going to be a lot of weight, a lot of pressure on our heart space at this particular juncture because we're looking back and we're definitely focused on all of the things that we wish would have happened in a completely different way. So emotionally speaking, we're really not looking to grow. We're not looking to heal. We're not looking to do anything other than give ourselves a little bit of time to be wanting to be that victimhood mentality and to complain. Now we're going to end the day off with a positive interaction and thank goodness for that. We have the moon in Capricorn energy, sextiling beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Scorpio energy. I talked uh, quite a few times before how we really enjoy Capricorn and Scorpio energy working together, especially because when you water earth, something grows. 
Now, we have the Capricorn energy anchoring us into this present moment, really showing us where it is that we have to close the door and deconstruct further some of those long term foundations and structures that the old version of self had built had created. Well, Venus in the Scorpio energy again is rising up as the Phoenix. We had a little bit of a meltdown earlier in the day. We sat in the funk. We sat in that negativity. We kind of went when victimhood mentality over it. And now we're bossing up in true Scorpio fashion. We sat in the darkness. We sat in the shadows. We understood where those parts of self were actually built and created. And then we rise up. We understand that in order for us to get differently, we have to do differently. We understand in our heart space now what needs to stay, what needs to go. We understand that we are worthy and deserving of living a life that looks good, that feels good, that feels safe and secure and stable. But in order for us to get there, we have to do the dirty work to close the door, to remove, to eliminate all of the old aspects that are preventing us from anchoring in this new version of self permanently and really putting us in a situation to, again, relive a lot of the pain and trauma wounds that, again, we're trying to grow out of, we're trying to heal from, we're trying to move on.